Welcome back. So in the last video, I built a high vacuum system and the plan with this is to build some vacuum tubes with that. However, uh, before I want to build some more vacuum tubes, I want to try something out. So in the past, I built the vacuum tubes with uh, just tungsten. So the filament is tungsten. This is pretty normal. However, there is a way to get more electrons flowing through the tube and this is called an emission coating and this will make the vacuum tube more efficient and this is way better because you don't have to heat things as much and they don't break down so fast. So uh, I think that's pretty important to actually make some vacuum tubes that actually last a long time. So before I want to build more vacuum tubes I want to test that. So to explain how this works, let's actually look at the periodic table that I have here in the background. So every element in the periodic table has a property that's called work function. And this is basically the energy required to remove an electron from this material or from the surface of this material. And if you think about it, that's pretty important for vacuum tubes. Because for a triode, for example, you want to get some electrons from the filament, then send it through the grid and to the plate. And the lower the work function, the better it is for your vacuum tube. Unfortunately, there's a little bit of a problem. The elements with the lowest work function are actually right here. And this is for example, strontium or barium. However, these elements right here have a very low melting point and they're also pretty reactive so you can't make a filament out of it and even if you would be able to the filament would burn out pretty quickly. So in normal vacuum tubes what people did is they took the carbonates from these elements that I talked about earlier and put it onto the filament and in the vacuum these carbonates break down into the elements or at least partially break down into the elements and this results in a better emission. So I made this adapter a while ago and this is basically a vacuum feed through. I have some wires here and they connect to the inside so this will be under vacuum and I can stick some components on here and then test some stuff. And that's what I'm going to do. I have here a filament and a plate. So I basically have a diode and I first, I'm first going to use it normally without any coating and see what electron emission I'm going to get. And then I will mix up a coating, coat the filament with it and see what the difference is. All right, here's the setup. I've put the adapter on the vacuum system. And yeah, someone in the last video pointed out this is glass and I'm, I'm, I have to clamp this on there. This is not great. I'm also sketched out by this. I need to build a better adapter. I actually have a compression fitting where I can fit glass tubes through this. So I have to build a better adapter. And because of that, I'm just going to do a very simple test or two very simple tests. I have here a high voltage source and a microamp meter and inline a resistor. And then I have a low voltage source for the filament. And I'm just going to put the high voltage on there and turn up the filament current until I read something like 50 microamps or something constant. And then read off how many amps or milliamps I need for the filament. And then after that, I'm going to put the emission coating on the on the filament and then set it to the same 50 microamps and see if I need a lower milliamp or lower amps on the filament current. And then the emission coating works. If not, uh, I'm definitely going to build a better adapter before doing more tests. So yeah, let's just do this, see if that works. All right, this is a little bit hard to see, but for the baseline test, I had to heat up the filament with a current of around 2.1 amps 
and only got 10 micrograms of emission current. This is pretty much expected and in my past vacuum tube builds I had to heat up the filament to around this level, making the filament very bright and hot. Now to the emission coating. For that I mixed up 56% barium carbonate, 31% strontium carbonate and 13% calcium carbonate. Unfortunately I noticed that my calcium carbonate that I ordered about a year ago was not exactly white, which means it's not very pure. So for future vacuum tubes I need to purify the stuff that I have or order some really pure chemicals. Regardless of that, to this mixture is now added some acetone and a little bit of nitrocellulose. And this will make it more like a paint that can be applied to the filament. After the acetone has evaporated, I put it back on the vacuum pump and slowly increase the filament current. As the filament heats up, the nitrocellulose will decompose and the carbonates will be converted to oxides. And lo and behold, I got 10 microamps of emission current at only 0.937 amps. Then I increased it to 1.26 amps and got 20 microamps. And at 1.5 amps of filament current, I already got 80 microamps. All right, this worked on the first try. There are a few things that I would improve and I thought in this video I'm going to do a bunch more tests. However, this would only be get some more pure chemicals and mix the chemicals or the carbonates a little bit better. I'm also not really comfortable with this improvised setup. The electrodes might actually short out in this vacuum hose that's actually just there to connect the vacuum system. So because of all of these problems, I'm going to wrap this video up and I'm going to continuously improve the emission coating by building some vacuum tubes. And I think next I'm going to build a new magnetron. So this one actually failed from the last attempt because the filament got so hot that the metal evaporated, something shorted out and the emission coating should actually fix this problem. So if you want to see that, subscribe. And I guess it's also very close to Christmas now. So Merry Christmas, Happy New Year and until next time.